Hello and welcome into the KE Report. Chad and Corey here getting an update from Goliath Resources. Traded on the TSXV under the ticker GOT and on the OTCQB under the ticker GOTRF. We're joined with the founder and CEO of Goliath Resources, Roger Rosmus. And Roger, it's great to get you on for an update on Goliath. You had a couple news releases come out since we chatted last in July. And the first one will go back kind of in the order they came out on August the 6th. You mentioned that the first eight holes of this year's drill program hit significant mineralization. This is at the Surebet Discoveries area. And so a great track record, a great closing ratio on every drill hole you put in hitting mineralization. I know we don't have the assays back on that yet, but maybe just speak to the success the team is having on the ground where pretty much everywhere they poke a hole, they're hitting something significant. Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for having me back. And yeah, it's been sort of busy. I know we've been trying to coordinate something earlier on, but finally back at home base for a bit here before I head out again on the road. But yeah, no, the uh, the results today certainly visually have been pretty incredible. And, uh, you know, we did actually, we did uh, release one of the whole two, three, five, one of the intercepts that it was actually, I think it had three or four assays are still pending on, I guess, three of them, uh, or could be possibly four. But in the news, we talked about two intercepts that are pending and well basically the, the entire hole is pending we, we pretty much sent i think the entire bloody uh, core to the lab for sampling on that one and that uh, actually did come back that hit the bonanza zone there at just uh, about five and a quarter meters at uh, 1.13 ounce per ton gold equivalent there so and that, that kind of rolls into the uh, the first eight holes uh, that's included here the hole two three five all kind of we're, you know, we're peppering the heck out of the bonanza zone there where you know we're getting fairly decent mineralization as well as what's called the width per se uh that that five and a quarter meter from 235 is roughly true width and if uh, people remember a whole uh, 197 from last year that ran about nine meters true width at uh, just over one ounce per ton gold equivalent as well so i think there's a, a very good chance of expanding on that uh, particular mineralized horizon where we're getting all this really high grade over an ounce per ton material. Uh, hence, I think the success rate based on, you know, some of these holes that we've talked about in that, uh, in that news release. And then, you know, corresponding to that, we've got uh, about 75% of those, the eight holes. Uh, so, so far, the first eight ones had uh, quite a bit of visible gold in it. So again, I think we spoke about this last time and the time before that, you know, last year, the holes that we drilled 35% had visible gold in it and you know this year right now we're batting you know the first out of the first eight we're getting you know 75 percent of those being uh, visible gold and that could be held true for possibly we're hoping anyways for the uh, the entire drill season for us so roger similar question to what i asked you on our interview late july when it comes to expanding or infilling mineralization at sherbet discovery in this bonanza zone Break down both of them. The holes that have been drilled, are they all expansion? Yeah, it's all about expansion. We're, we're essentially tagging this vein that's got lots of gold in it. So over an ounce is an example. If we're able to come out, well, let's say, at the end of the season with a 500 by 500 meter area, let's say the width is you know average at five meters thick, and it's all over an ounce per ton material gold equivalent. I mean, that's uh, you do the math on that, and it's it's pretty substantial. It would be certainly pay for a lot of capex out of the gate in a mining type scenario. We're stepping out. I think the the furthest step out right now to date is about 300 meters. There's a hole right now that would, assuming it it hits Bonanza where we think it is, way to the north. I think it's about 850 meters to the north uh, east from hole 197. So that would actually be a pretty significant intercept for us and obviously just showing the continuation of bonanza and the continuity of that uh, that one very thick vein so that one seems to be having the most i guess the juiciest holes that we've seen uh, thus far well and roger in addition to stepping out you're also stepping down some of these are going deeper and you mentioned in the past that you know there's a lot of action in the sediments and where the sediments meet the volcanics. But then when you get down in the volcanics and get down below Sherbet and Bonanza Shear and get down into the Golden Gate zone, you also have this new mothership feeder zone. It looks like a different kind of mineralization. Just speak to how, as this drill program evolves, you're going to be able to drill from closer to the valley floor and, and get into the depths as well as stepping up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that 
the mother feeder zone, you know, that's more of like an intrusive type. So kind of a, let's call it slimmer to what you're seeing at Snowline Gold. We're seeing very similar looking rock. The quartz veining, I think uh, Snowline has kind of five, these veins per meter. You know, I just got back from site there and, you know, some of these, you know, what I, what I saw anyways, and obviously assay depending, but we uh, were seeing kind of two to three of those quartz type veining per meter as well. So uh, mind you, uh, ours are much thicker than what you see at, at the snow line. So, you know, what does that mean entirely to the, the overall project is, I mean, you know, there's quite a few dikes there, a lot of intrusive type material there, and it looks to be that there is mineralization to be found. And so now we are actually relogging all of our core from 2021, 2022, 2023, that intercepted similar type of material, which again, could expand the, the volume of the entire system. So that would be a, a bit of a game changer for us as well. And, and in addition to obviously drilling down into the volcanics, into the andesite there, where we are seeing decent type of mineralization, lots of sulfides, visible gold, again, you know, expanding it down and, and outwards and, you know, pockets of the entire system that may have economical type of grades that could be added to, you know, a potential maiden resource at some point. Well, let's follow up when we do get back the full assay results from these holes, as well as some of those other holes that you're re-assaying. Let's also talk about that August 12th news release where you outlined that the first four holes at Treasure Island all hit abundant sulfide mineralization in the VMS type target zones. Look, this is the first time you're drilling this area. This is in the Cambria ice fields that the company holds all within that gold digger project. How important could these results be early on here, Roger? Well, yeah, it, good point. It's first time it's ever been drilled actually no one had ever sampled this area ever there was no bc min files on it so it's a brand new grassroots discovery where we're seeing you know similar mineraliz mineralization that we're seeing at surface lots of calcopyrite lots of gold uh you know one of the channel cuts we took it was about a just under a meter ran you know over 28 grams per ton gold equivalent and that one was about six percent copper but some of the copper numbers were as high as uh, i think 14 or 15 percent and yeah, no, the, the first four holes here, man, they, they look awesome. You know, the, the news release, we've got some nice pictures in there just showing some of the core uh, as well as in comparing it to some of the channel cuts that we took and some of the grabs. So, you know, similar to uh, Sherbet where, you know, the channel cuts, the previous holes are looking very similar to the holes we're drilling this year in comparative for, for each particular target. So, you know, we feel pretty confident that based on what we're seeing, Based on what we took from surface, you know, we, we hope to that, you know, the, the truth machine will deliver what we're expecting. Well, and Roger, when you think about these targets at Treasure Island or just anywhere in the Cambria ice fields, a lot of this was covered under glacier. So to your point, nobody had ever drilled it. Nobody had ever seen it with their eyes before. It's, these are new outcrops that your team found initially with channel cuts and, and rock chip samples. And now you're drilling on these targets. But maybe just speak to how this is on trend with the Porter, Idaho mine and that that was a pr prolific polymetallic deposit and what that could mean for this whole Cambria Icefields area where you've got a lot of targets to still drill. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's about six kilometers to the uh, to the east, southeast of the uh, Porter, Idaho mine. That was quite profitable back in the uh, early uh, 30s, I guess, um, back in the day. And uh, when they built that mine, it was actually just right on the edge of the glacier. And now, I mean, the glacier obviously has receded significantly there. And so we hope that, you know, we're going to have a similar type of grades and so on and, and potential tonnage there. So and in general, just the whole area is new outcrops are being shown or, you know, coming to surface, I guess, really, or just this, the ice is melting. So it does hold the potential for additional many, many more brand new discoveries for the company, which is it would be great, obviously great for the shareholders, uh, lots of upside, lots of blue sky potential that is untapped at this particular juncture. All right. So the drill program started back in July. So far, we've had two assay results. That's what we covered at the end of July. But look, we've talked about a lot of different holes here from different areas on this project. Roger, how far are you through? How many meters have been drilled this year at the project? And when do you think we're going to start getting some of these assay results back? Sure. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, you know, we did announce initially that we're going to do 15,000 meters, I guess, earlier this year. Currently, we've actually drilled 18,000 meters. This is just at Sherbet proper itself. And up at Treasure Island, I think uh, it's closer to 3,500 meters in total. So, you know, obviously we've we've gone above uh, what we had initially talked about. And, you know, we're we're still drilling. August is, you know, just over halfway through here. And uh, we'll try and get as many meters in as we possibly can. Well, and Roger, I'd also think it's important to discuss the news that you just had come out on August 13th and then updated us on August 22nd, just yesterday, about the closing of a strategic Singapore-based global commodity fund coming in as a, basically a strategic partner and helping on a recent financing. Speak to the significance of bringing in higher caliber strategic shareholders into the Goliath Resources shareholder base. Yeah. Good point. I mean, you know, as we de-risk this project with obviously the drilling, it's just attracting a higher caliber of uh, groups, individuals, you know, high net worth investors that are there for the long haul, like the sticky money that they're hoping this will be, you know, a billion plus dollar market cap company by the time we're finished defining what is actually at Sherbet. And then obviously with the the new targets up on the Cambridge Icefield, Treasure Island, is that going to be a material type of uh, a system. Obviously too early to tell, but certainly uh, there's a lot of smoke there in the drill core and you know we've got a lot of high hopes for it. So let's talk capital management then. Because you're raising even more money, this drill program increased from even what you announced at the beginning of the year. What do you estimate your budget's going to be? What do you want to end this year with in terms of cash in the bank? Well, similar to last year, you know, end up with, uh, obviously want to leave some cash in the kitty where we can kick off a program without having to go to markets because it'll be a quiet time. As you all know, uh, you know, all the news will be done probably by January, some midtime January, probably AME roundup with all the assays being released. And then we go back to work, you know, redoing the model and planning for the 2025 drill program. But, uh, you know, at this point, you know, we were able to get that financing done, this uh, 6.5 without a warrant. Obviously, Crestcat's participating uh, in that as well. And uh, as far as how many meters we're going to do, we're going to try and get as many meters in as possible uh, that we can, being obviously a short season, can't drill year round. Well, you could drill year round, but it's going to cost you a lot more money. And um, that's that's the target. And, you know, try and get, hopefully we get a nice warm fall here into uh, September and uh, the guys can continue on doing uh, what they're doing up on the hill. Well, Roger, I want to ask you one more wild card question. Because I've had a couple people write in asking what it would mean in the Cambria ice fields if you started finding a lot of VMS copper gold mineralization where there's so much of a copper presence. Because some of those grades from even the channel samples you guys had last year were very impressive. Would it be something where you'd spin that project off into another company or would you keep it all under one roof? People are looking at it as the, you know, the, the Sherbet discovery area you know, it's kind of removed from where the Cambria Icefields targets could be. Could it be two different projects at one point in time? Because right now it's all under the gold digger banner. Yeah, definitely anything's possible. Again, this is be a, you know, a gold copper. Well, what we're seeing anyway is a gold copper type of a, a system, obviously more VMS uh, style. You know, the possibility uh, is, you know, there's, we'll get the, the fork in the road. And, uh, you know, David Resources does exist. That's a 100% privately owned company by Goliath Resources. And so we're already set up for that if that's the case. Or, hey, let's say a, a big miner comes along and says, we'll give you X amount for the entire lot. And if it uh, makes sense for the, for the shareholders, the maximized value, then you just kind of, you know, go down that path. If not, then, you know, you spin out what you're not getting value for into new co, dividend that out to the shareholders, and then, you know, start over. And the David Resources would be the next iteration of Goliath. Okay. Well, I know there's just still a long time before that would happen, but people are already thinking that way, Roger. So I'm glad that you fielded the question. And as we know, there's a lot of news on tap here. So the big push is going to be looking for the assays as they start rolling in. Please keep us posted as they come in and we'll get you back on the show for an update. And if people listening in want to follow along with the news flow at Goliath Resources, definitely click on the link below this interview. It takes you straight over to the company website, right to their news section. So you too can follow along with the assays as they start hitting the news wires. And Roger, looking forward to our next conversation. That's great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And I look forward to uh, discussing those assays when they do finally uh, start rolling in. <laughs>